will be uh, Dr. Kurt Nolte. Dr. Nolte wears many hats. He is director and area extension agent for the Yuma County Cooperative Extension Service of the University of Arizona, and he is the economic development director for Yuma County. Dr. Nolte, Nolte contributes to a team of faculty and staff to best serve the desert production areas of southwestern U.S. by promoting a conduit of information flux to benefit growers with a long-term goal of improving farm profitability while minimizing adverse effects to the environment. Kurt integrates the use of UAV technologies, imaging systems, and post-flight processing into desert fruit and vegetable cropping systems to provide either research or commercial utility. Dr. Nolte also assists with the co coordination of field demonstrations and application-based research project areas involving irrigation management, pest control, food safety, reduced tillage, and field labor. The use of micro UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles, for field researcher and commercial production has recently gained considerable attention as an alternative image capture and data acquisition platform. This brief presentation will include a brief overview of using UAVs in 3D field modeling, plant stand assessment, plant growth dynamics, normalized difference vegetation index or NDVI, ratio calculations, irrigation monitoring, and aerial pollination. So at this time, I'd like to turn the uh, microphone over to Dr. Nolte. Well, thank you very much for that uh, great in introduction. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with everybody here this afternoon. Um, uh, if we can jump into the first slide, uh, I guess that's me. Uh, apologize for that. There we go. So um, I work with a, a variety of folks here in the desert southwest. One of them I want to make sure that I identify is my uh, friend, colleague, uh, technician, Rosa Bevington, who's, who's um, uh, in the room here with me, actually. Um, and, and I have to attribute a lot of the work that we've been doing in the last five years in the use of uh, UAV systems here in the desert to her uh, and the team that we've assembled here in, um, in, the, in the southwest part of Arizona, which is in Yuma County, and I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, where I work and live, but I'm on the Mexican border with California, separated by the Colorado River. And uh, part of the, of the infrastructure that we have in Yuma County is um, uh, a, a collection of uh, roughly a quarter million acres, all irrigated through the Colorado River through seven irrigation districts. And um, we're noted for having extremely fertile uh, river bottom soils as a result of the Grand Canyon being carved out about three million years ago. Uh, we get very little rain here, which is good for flying uh, UAV systems and evaluating them. In fact, uh, I think the last time it rained um, was in the first week of January, and since then, uh, maybe a, a little shower in September. So, so we have a, a very, very long growing season. Uh, if you're not familiar with the desert southwest, uh, the, the produce that's grown in the United States uh, resides where I work and live. It's the winter leafy green epicenter. Uh, if you buy a bag salad between uh, the month of November and March, it typically is grown right here in the area that I work in. Uh, 26 coolers, 9 salad plants. We grow a lot of medjool dates, which I'll talk about today. Uh, quite a bit of citrus that's grown in this region. So the reason why I bring this whole uh, collection of points up uh, for the session today is I'm very integrated with the industry that is involved in production agriculture and and I've been charged with um, integrating a lot of the UAV systems that uh, you folks have been aware of, uh, mostly commercial. We're not involved in doing any research and development on any of these pieces of equipment. But um, just finding a utility for a lot of these uh, systems to, uh, to gain an economic edge in, uh, in production agriculture uh, in this state, Southern California, and across the nation. So uh, some images of, uh, of some commercial production in, in Arizona, particularly in the area that I work in. Um, we'll be talking about lettuce today very briefly. Uh, this is wide bed romaine in the upper, uh, upper corner of the, of the screen. 
Uh, we have uh, narrow bed production. This is again romaine. There's spinach on wide beds. Uh, all of this is is harvested and, and uh, shipped out of Yuma, roughly a thousand trucks a day, uh, either by uh, 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 truck uh, fresh fresh cut produce or bag salad in a variety of different ways that head to your grocery store or your restaurant or to your fast food chain. Uh, because of these products that you buy in the grocery store uh, are, are uh, uh, high input products, we call them high value uh, uh, commodities, and, and in growing high value lettuce, uh, we demand, or the growers demand, extremely high resolution images. And so unlike uh, uh, some of the work that's been successfully done in other parts of the world, in the Midwest, where we're looking at uh, large acreage of wheat or soybeans or cotton, in, in the produce industry, we're, we're trying our best to identify systems that can identify single plants within a field, such as the image that you see in front of you there. So um, in, in a lot of cases, we're interested in just looking at a single plant. We're, we're not necessarily interested in looking at a whole field. We're, we're more interested in looking at uh, single plants. So, so having a capacity to uh, uh, develop sensors and use uh, sensors for direct utility in the produce industry is the kind of work that I'm very interested in doing. Uh, the collection of um, uh, equipment that, that I use with my team are either fixed-wing aircraft. Um, we have uh, a whole variety, uh, a large array of uh, small uh, user-driven uh, quadcopters and then all the way up to heavy lift multi-rotor machines. Uh, our software packages include uh, uh, Agasoft Photoscan, Pix4D, uh, we use Fiji Image J quite a bit. Um, uh, we have a variety of sensors, as as um, as uh, Dr. Maha was was mentioning. We use the uh, the Red Edge. We have uh, converted uh, uh, point and shoot cameras. We have converted uh, Zenmuse X3 and X5 cameras, and even PowerShot cameras. So so we are not an engineering group. We are more of a direct uh, utility group. And that's our, uh, that's our claim to fame here. Uh, and, and you'll see a lot of the work that we've done has a direct uh, impact for the industries that I represent. So what I would like to talk about today are some things that we've learned in the last uh, four to five years in using UAVs directly in the field. Um, and that is uh, uh, some, some advantages of using them and some disadvantages. We've, we've noticed uh, a lot of growers who have purchased a lot of equipment um, tend to tend to not use them because the the utility is not there for them. Uh, a lot of pest control advisors, a lot of farmers in our area uh, are not those that have a, a large uh, uh, funding stream, and so they have asked me to evaluate some some products that they could buy off the shelf and evaluate them. Uh, as part of their uh, equipment portfolio. These things are, are extremely low cost, and uh, I've been asked to evaluate them to see if there's some utility in those. Uh, uh, toward the middle of my presentation, I'll be talking more about some of the things that we've been doing the last year or so with regard to lettuce plant stand counting and yield prediction. Uh, uh, we're doing some really innovative work related to that. And then finally, some pictures that we took, uh, uh, essentially pictures, relatively little data, because uh, it's all new and, and sort of exploding in front of us. Um, we have a lot of medjool dates here in the desert. Uh, there's quite a bit of dates being produced in uh, the hotter parts of the world, like Morocco, Saudi Arabia, Israel. Um, and so we've been asked to look at uh, pollinating dates, uh, particularly medjool dates, with the use of a drone. So those are the first, uh, those are the four topics that I'd like to uh, uh, offer you today as part of my uh, my presentation. So so very quickly, and, and an entire hour could be devoted to this. I know I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about the pros and cons of using UAVs, and if there are uh, producers or growers, farmers in the audience, um, and they're they're just beginning to become more uh, aware of the capacity to use these pieces of equipment. There are some some advantages, obviously, but there are some some challenges that uh, a lot of us are, are working on 
uh, and will improve on as we get more uh, 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 data and more equipment that's uh, made available to the growers that need to use them. So very quickly here, let's, uh, let's just take a look at some of the advantages of using um, unmanned aerial vehicles uh, for direct impacts for growers. Is, uh, you can read them as I will to you today, is the, the response time um, in, in getting something out in the air is uh, is within minutes and I know a lot of pest control advisors are very interested in getting something out of their truck get it up in the sky to evaluate uh, a disease or, or a weed issue or, or something related to that uh, privacy issues with regard to farming this is a very competitive business that uh, we're all in and uh, growers are very interested in um, protecting their particular uh, grower management schemes and so they're not necessarily interested in hiring anyone to do to do the work for them essentially uh, they're interested in in evaluating their own fields and they want to collect their own data uh, and the use of a drone can obviously improve efficiency and data collection which we'll talk about later today and then finally the uh, the uh, the ability to use uh, autonomous flight characteristics, as many of you know, uh, certainly reduces a lot of the piloting uh, error that goes into uh, capturing um, images in a repeatable way, uh, which is uh, really a, a, a great tool that I've been using in the last two to three years doing this kind of work. Um, Three-dimensional mapping is something that I've been involved with for about a year, primarily on the research end, but we think that at some point it'll be more mainstream um, in, um, in production uh, across the U.S. for evaluating crop height, um, different parameters related to that. This is a research trial that I conducted last summer. Uh, looking at uh, transplanted lettuce in the desert to see how well it performs in the uh, um, uh, here in the in the desert uh, during a period of time where it's 120 degrees out and lettuce doesn't necessarily do well. So I wanted to offer you that we're we're working on three-dimensional capacity in a lot of the work that we do here, and um, I'm not going to talk at all here, but just mention that uh, the, Dr. Maha did an absolutely fabulous job talking about the sensor technologies that's, uh, that's coming um, on board here and he's uh, working diligently with others uh, trying to make that happen. And then there are some uh, disadvantages of using some of these uh, pieces of equipment. Number one, um, as Jim will probably mention uh, toward the end of the hour here, regulation, legal uh, uncertainties. Uh, we have a certificate of authorization that we fly under at our, at our facility. But, but I know in the commercial end, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty related to the, the regulations involving the use of the UAVs, particularly in a, in a commercial setting. These things uh, that we fly uh, range in price from $1,000 all the way up to 30 or more thousand dollars. A lot of the sensors are, are somewhat confusing on what you what what is actually useful for you. A lot of a lot of growers uh, that I work with uh, buy a very inexpensive system and become very disappointed at the uh, at the final result when they when they're looking at the images that they capture. Flying time is an issue for everyone, including us. Uh, a lot of our multi-rotor copters can only fly for 15 or 20 minutes, which means that we have um, 10 to 15 batteries that we haul out to the field when we need to do a, a large uh, amount of acreage. Of course, the fixed-wing aircraft can fly uh, much, much longer. Um, the, the performance that's related to post-flight uh, post processing is a, is a big factor for us. In some cases, we're flying so low uh, altitude, uh, 50, 75 feet, that we're capturing close to 2,000 photographs for a 40-acre parcel of land. And so that is uh, an enormous amount of data to process by, uh, by a computer. And we have some pretty nice equipment in terms of the computer uh, processing horsepower behind us, but a, a small grower uh, may not have that particular capacity. Uh, the technology and expertise to fly is simply not trivial. Uh, we've had uh, uh, a few crashes here and there, uh, and even with our expertise in flying for, for over uh, eight or nine years, we too uh, also run into these problems. And so uh, weather, stability uh, of, the, of the system, 
uh, clouds, rain, shadows, weeds all play a role in that. So, so a lot of uh, a lot of manufacturers uh, may paint a rosy picture with regard to the use of the UAV systems, and they're very very useful. However, uh, in some cases, there's some disadvantages of using them um, for the reasons that I just described. And so. Um, to, to change the topic here, uh, about two or three years ago, uh, uh, we had a, a collection of uh, pest control advisors, and I'm sure many of you know what a pest controller advisor is. It's a person who essentially walks the fields and looks for things that are going to pose a problem for a particular field. Uh, we were asked to evaluate some low-cost uh, UAV systems. And so um, I'm offering you a very quick overview of, of a Phantom. So this is a Phantom 2. Many of you might obviously know what this is. Uh, it's very common. Uh, we no longer purchase any of these anymore. Uh, two or three years ago, this was really the only thing in, in, uh, uh, that was available commercially to fly. So we bought uh, five or six of these things, and, and now we, we no longer use them, primarily because they're very, uh, they, they, they simply don't do the, the work for us. So here's an example of, uh, of a low-cost UAV camera system. Um, and uh, near-infrared imagery is primarily the, the kind of work that, or the kind of camera that we use. So over in the, um, in the lower right corner, uh, you can purchase a, uh, uh, a filter modified uh, GoPro camera for NIR, and if you go outside and take a photograph of the of the lawn or look look for some trees, here's some here's a some sidewalk here, cars and so forth, or a field. You'll quickly notice that uh, the the image itself looks looks washed out when you compare it to the uh, image above, which is a uh, an SL1 modified by MaxMax Max NIR. This is the kind of uh, image that we want to capture if we buy a commercial off-the-shelf camera system that's available for uh, for sale. <clears throat> there are other modified uh, 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 filter modified cameras available. This is uh, IR Pro that we evaluated, and you can see a very similar thing. So, so for $300, $350, mounting one of these two cameras, either the IR Pro or this uh, modified GoPro, uh, the utility is simply not there. And so uh, we, we either fly um, our MicaSense camera, the, the modified SL1, or, or even the Zenmuse X3 modified provides us with much greater results. And so this is a, uh, uh, a shot at uh, 50 feet uh, flown with one of our Matrix 100 copters uh, with the IR Pro camera. And you can see the, the, the very difficult for us at 50 feet to, to pick out individual plants when you compare that to the uh, image that we captured uh, 25 feet higher, 75 feet, almost the same stage of growth with a, a Zenmuse X3 blue-green NIR modified camera. So if you're a producer out there uh, trying to find a, a pathway forward with the use of UAVs, we certainly do not recommend any of the uh, uh, filter-modified GoPro or IR Pro type cameras. Uh, we are recommending um, a much more robust camera system that will provide you with the results that you need in the vegetable industry. I'm going to skip this slide in the interest of time. Um, uh, another disadvantage of uh, using GoPro cameras is the fisheye effect. Uh, as you see up in front here, uh, uh, the, 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 the image that is captured by a, a, a non-electronically corrected uh, GoPro camera is simply not useful, especially when an ortho mosaic is required. Um, uh, to to uh, uh, stitch these images, these overlapping images together to make a, a rendering that's actually useful. So this is a, a, a photograph of a ortho mosaic created by a, a GoPro. This one happens to be a red, green, blue, non-corrected for fisheye. And then this is uh, on the right side is the Zenmuse X3 that we've been using. So um, in a nutshell, um, the low, very low cost UAV systems that a lot of farmers or a lot of pest control advisors seem to be leaning towards may not be a good choice uh, for direct impact of, um, of using the system in a, in a real agricultural setting. So uh, the next piece that I'd like to briefly touch upon in the last uh, five or ten minutes that I have is uh, uh, what has been really useful for us in the area of uh, plant stand counting and yield prediction. Uh, 
So uh, if you're a lettuce grower, you know what this picture is. This is three-line romaine lettuce that's going to be grown either for romaine hearts or for the bag salad industry. And of course, we have nine of these salad plants. Each salad plant consumes roughly two million pounds of lettuce a day. And so it's very important for um, those folks that are involved in, 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 the, in, the, in the produce industry, particularly in, in salad production, to know what a potential yield is for a 40-acre parcel of land. And so we've been asked to evaluate uh, yield potential of, um, of small plants to see if there is a utility in using uh, UAV systems, say, for in a field like this. So this is, this is what romaine lettuce looks like at 75 feet. You saw this picture earlier. Uh, this is 25 days after thinning. Um, with a X3 NIR modified camera, you can see the plants stick out very nicely there. And we're interested in looking at each individual plant. We convert that image into NDVI, which I think many of you know what to do. In this case, we're using uh, Fiji Image J. Uh, we can pick out individual plants, which is something that uh, growers are extremely interested in. We really don't know what the meaning is between, say, a plant that looks like this, where the, you, you see a, a, a magenta tint to it. Uh, the LUT we, we used in this particular rendering uh, suggests that uh, uh, red is uh, the, the highest index, uh, green is a medium index, and of course uh, black is uh, the worst uh, index. But you can see here the variation in size of these plants, which is really important for us because we're interested in yield potential within this field. We quickly convert this uh, NDVI image into a binary um, image. It's simply black and white of the same picture that you saw a minute ago. And uh, you can see here that there's some variation in the, in the, in the field. So we're looking at uh, either small plants, which you see there, or larger plants, which you see there. All of this is extremely important to a lettuce grower. They're all paid by the, by the pound of lettuce that they cut every day out of these fields. And so it's uh, very important for a lettuce producer to know the yield potential um, uh, especially uh, two months away from harvest because uh, in many cases a, a producer can can plant another field. Uh, keep in mind we live in an area where we have very little weather concerns except for the hot, hotter parts of the summer. Many growers can have two or even three crops on the same field. And so if we know what the yield potential is for a field like this, uh, we may even plant another field or hold back and not plant. Um, the software that we've been using lately is uh, Fiji Image J, and uh, uh, the, the, the software can identify each individual plant in the field. And, and uh, the next slide will show you that these, these plants are individually numbered. Uh, this is a blown up uh, image, and maybe if you kind of kind of look through the fuzziness here you can see that this plant is like 680 here's one that's numbered at 797 each of these plants then provides us with uh, uh, a, 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 a quick analysis of what the plant is 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 doing in terms of its area its width its height is it a is it a circle like a basketball or is the head of lettuce like a football is what is the diameter in inches is it a ball or a square and the density of the particular plant so so this may mean very little to you unless you're a, a, a actual vegetable producer or particularly a, a lettuce grower because lettuce growers are very interested in this work we're related to the size of the plant because the size uh, can be correlated directly with final yield potential we're also looking at uh, lettuce at very small sizes. So uh, the, the image that you see here on the left is a uh, image right at thinning. So these are these are small plants, about the size of a quarter, that we're picking up uh, at 50 feet <coughs> at thinning um, to determine whether or not these plants are going to be suitable for harvest or even predict their uh, marketability two to three months away from harvest. And this is the latest uh, collection of data that we just uh, uh, received from our collaborator, a major uh, uh, salad producer in the United States uh, is collaborating with me on this project. And we're looking at, uh, in this case, down on the x-axis, this is the size of the plant at thinning in square inches. And on the y-axis is the final pack out weight of a particular head. And you can see here the, the reasonably tight correlation 
in the in the uh, yield packout potential of a of a of a field related to the size of the plant at thinning. So we feel that the drone or the UAV system could be used as a yield predictor in lettuce, uh, among other crops, as the uh, as the system gets uh, better dialed in. Um, very quickly here, um, uh, this is red cabbage that was planted last summer. Uh, you can see here that we converted those red cabbage uh, plants to a green tint. And uh, unfortunately, this, uh, this particular grower had a, a, an unusual mishap of cotton being defoliated and the aerial applicator didn't clean out the tank. So you can see here the, the southern part below the arrow is, a, is an area that did not um, uh, uh, plants simply did not do well because of the defoliant that was sprayed on them. Grower asked us to evaluate this field for damage. And so we, uh, we flew uh, uh, several drones, several UAV systems over, counted the plants, and were able to actually tell them the, num the number of, of plants that were, uh, that were damaged by, by simply counting them in the field. So we feel that uh, the, the, the UAV system in that capacity is, uh, is, uh, is pretty useful. Uh, uh, plant damage uh, loss estimation is a is a really cool thing if if it's needed. So in the last uh, two minutes uh, that I two or three minutes that I have here, I like to uh, tell you the, the the success that we're having with pollinating uh, medjool dates with a with a UAV. And so if you're not familiar with dates, they grow on palm trees that are almost like humans. There's a male and a female palm tree. Uh, the 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 whole tree is a male or the whole tree is a female. And so if you're trying to commercially produce dates, uh, you simply want to plant all female trees. And then you have the challenge of pollinating all these uh, female flowers. Well, typically, um, a flower is encased in a husk like this. And this is the stage that you see here of the, of the flower that's ready for uh, being pollinated. And typically, um, almost uh, amazingly so, if you're not familiar with it, all of these pollination events occur by hand. So this is a gentleman out in the field with a leaf blower, and he introduces the pollen into the windstream of a, uh, of a, of a backpack sort of uh, leaf blower thing. And we thought that we could adapt uh, the propeller wash off of the uh, drone, as was uh, mentioned in a previous uh, webinar session uh, several weeks ago. To, uh, to do something very similar to this. So, so here's what we, we, uh, we've been using the last uh, several weeks. Uh, this is a Inspire 1 with a uh, nylon bag uh, that you see here full of pollen. We, we mount uh, two of these bags underneath the propeller wash and then we fly almost like a honeybee uh, above the canopy of the trees and the, uh, the, the UAV system delivers the pollen directly to the trees. This is a photograph real quickly here of the pollen leaving the bag and going directly on the tree. We, uh, we, uh, we use the, the, the wind, if we do have wind, to blow the pollen directly into the center of the tree. So we're, we're working with the drone um, propeller wash as well as the environment to get the pollen directly into the center of the tree. And there's a close-up of the of the system in a smaller tree um, doing its work like a, like a honeybee does. Uh, and there's a fellow there checking to see if the, if the pollen is still in the bag. And uh, we're in the process of evaluating this. So this is uh, kind of at the halftime point in our work with the, with the date pollination. Uh, dates are formed on these strands, these bunches. And so these are the young dates that are just uh, just now forming. So um, in the interest of time, I'll, I'll uh, simply end it there. And I want to thank everyone for the invitation to, uh, to, to visit with you today. Give me a call. Shoot me an email. Let me know how I can help you uh, in any way um, with the, the use of uh, any of the drone uh, or UAV systems that you might want to explore. That's me on the cover of a magazine, so uh, I do some innovative things with the vegetable industry, and I'm fortunate to be involved in a, a large group of very successful folks that work and live here in the desert southwest. So thank you very much, um, and I'll turn it directly over to Jim. Wow. Thank you, Dr. Nolte. Um, Again, it's, uh, I look back at this in another exceptional talk. And even though these are short, these are designed simply to uh, whet your appetite and um, just to expose you to a variety of uh, topics related to unmanned aircraft uh, systems. And uh, again, this, today's two presentations are 